Have you ever wondered what six months of art subscription art supplies looks like? It's a little something like this. Upgrade request that I open four boxes of their subscription art supply boxes and then share them with you. I said four, but they sent me six and um, I, I'm, I'm gonna open all six. <laughs> I'm not gonna just, you know, not know what's inside the other two. <laughs> Crazy. <clears throat> Upgrade is a subscription from Germany, so if you live in that country, you get free shipping, which is really cool. If you don't, or if you just like discounts, I have a 15% off coupon with the code WAFFLES15. Now, let's find out what's inside these suckers, shall we? I've never actually experienced an Upgrade box before, but right off the bat, I'm very intrigued by the personality of the boxes. They're very loud and doodly and expressive. So there's a lot of bold choices. I've decided to start with the oldest box that they sent, and then we're gonna move towards the most recent. So this is their August box from last year. Oh. <laughs> Gotcha. So inside the box, we're greeted by some uh, more bold colors I see. I mean, I love it. And I guess these little guys pop out. You can't forget this guy. <laughs> On your mark, get set, draw. All right, so inside this box, we have the Brunzeal Dual Ended Brush Fine Liner Pens. And look at that color scheme. Mwah. There are three acrylic paint markers, a four millimeter light pink, a two millimeter turquoise green, a two millimeter sky blue light. No, wait. Four. And two millimeter Naples yellow deep. And then pencils, there's five, nope, six. <laughs> Clearly I can't count. These are the Kuinor Hardmouth Polycolor pencils, and they fit very nicely into the current color scheme of the paint pens. And that just, it settles, settles my heart. What is this? <laughs> it's like an extra nib. Didn't end up finding any mention of this in any of the literature. Um, and then the last art supply is this two to three millimeter Graph Master acrylic paint pen. And then look at, I found another nib. <laughs> Ow. Ah! I threw it, I do not know if I'm gonna be able to find that. There's also a sticker sheet in this box and a print by the featured artist. This, I mean, I hesitate to call it a booklet because it's, it's kind of thick. I mean, it's kind of like a mini magazine and then it explains all of the art supplies inside the box. It also has swatches and tips on how to use them from like different artists. And there's also links to a process video using all of the art supplies in the box by the featured artist. And honestly, there's even more, but I mean, it's all in the same bold and colorful style of the sticker sheet and the rest of the box, which is really, really fun. And there's plenty to unpack in here if you really took a chance to read every page. They also have some paper to use all the art supplies on. This box had an entire multimedia sketchbook and it had a nice little galaxy print, which was really fun. I was pretty impressed by the sheer number of art supplies in this box and like how well they fit into a color scheme. But I mean, sure, art supplies can look pretty next to each other, but let's see if they work together. I ended up swatching everything directly into the sketchbook that came with. The only thing this box feels like it's lacking is like a white paint pen, but like I can't fault them on that because it just is like such a large number of items in this box already. I kind of appreciate that they didn't include an eraser and a sharpener, because if you do end up subscribing to an art box, you kind of end up with a lot of those. And at some point, you can have too many. I ended up taking inspiration from the actual art print to make my swatches a little more fun. I mean, you could even call it like a little bit more chaotic than what I would usually do, because I usually do like a grid of same size circles. <laughs> but before I can get into that, I have to prep the paint pen. <laughs> I will say paint pens are worth it, but they also take a very long time. I grouped all of the orange art supplies together with hearts. Then with the blue, I also did hearts. But then I was like, ooh, let's do something a little different than hearts. So I did checkerboard and I just kind of layered all of the same colored art supplies over and over until it looked cool and it made me happy. And then at this point I kind of decided, why didn't I just do a rainbow? Cause we kind of have like a bit of a rainbow vibe here that I could do. So then I grabbed the green pencil and I shoved it kind of between the orange and the blue and with little stars and sparkles. And then I went back to the blue and I decided it needed a new shape. And the shape I chose was a flower. And I kind of just had fun with it, you know, being artsy, going back and layering the supplies and just kind of seeing how they work together. Cause like sometimes art supplies do not like to be on top of other art supplies and some art supplies just, just, just don't work that way. 
I don't know what else I'm trying to say. <laughs> and this might have, meant, have been the quickest way to swatch, but I actually did find it rather useful just kind of seeing how my brain chose to layer things just by seeing the art supplies and then layering them. So it kind of, it felt like making an illustration and how like my brain would make those choices in a way that like drawing swatches in a grid and then like layering some of them. It's more utilitarian. This felt more creative and it was just, it got the brain clicking. And so this is all of the art supplies from the first box. I do love the color scheme and I like the mix of art supplies with the water-based brush pens, the colored pencils, and then the acrylic paint markers. It's kind of just a really fun doodly mix. Not like the art supplies I use the most, but definitely feels very creative and doodly, I would sum it up as. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to box number two because we have five more to get to. This is the October 2021 box. It looks the same as the previous one, but it's got green accents instead of orange. So that's different. <laughs> Still struggling with these tabs. Ooh, purple. On top, we have these two paint brushes. This is a number six round synthetic brush, super crispy and fresh. And then we have a wash brush number 12. The bristles are darker and look really rough. <laughs> And so I brushed it around my hand and there's already some loose bristles, unlike when I did the same thing with other brush. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about this one. <laughs> but jumping into our deep purple tissue paper, I found a very interesting mix. There's this liquid pencil in three colors, gray nine, yellow, and blue. And then we have five watercolor crayons that are super heavy. They're also greasier than they look, if you were asking. I, I don't know if you could tell. So I can already tell like right off the bat, the theme of this box is far different, just like the art supplies are very different, but it's still that like bold and loudness that I find very unique. There's also another sticker sheet with artist submitted illustrations. I like this one. <laughs> we also got another mini magazine with a very happy cactus on it. The inside graphic design in this one is a little bit more pleasing to me. Again, it's got spreads dedicated to each art supply and more information on them. And of course, swatches. There's also tips from artists and links to the process video using the supplies in the box. I appreciate the effort they put into these. I can't imagine it's a very quick process just by the sheer number of pages. This is the print, which used all the art supplies in the box by the featured artist. As well as we got another sketchbook. This time it's actually a 100% cotton zigzag sketchbook. Perfect for watercolor supplies. And here's everything inside the October box. I can tell just right off the bat that these art supplies aren't gonna be great for like precision work, but they're gonna be really great for like filling large areas. I decided to swatch everything inside that like same sketchbook from the first box, which this one's not necessarily for the art supplies that came with this box, but I thought it would help me stay organized. I had so much fun with the last swatches that I decided to try and do something, I don't know, equally creative, this time centering around stars. I basically drew some with the crayons and then I used water to drag the pigment downwards just to kind of get a vibe for the pigment. Oh, they kind of look like they're crying. Just made myself sad. Suck it up. <clears throat> then the liquid pencils. I think I've used these ones before, but I completely forgot how much it literally looks like you're just smearing pencil onto the paper with these. Like, pfft, I love it. I never really figured out how to use them in my style, but they're interesting. Also the yellow one, like not my favorite. I'm gonna use the pleasant word for it and call it swamp water. We'll leave it at that. I put down a wet wash of water in the bottom corner there and tried some art supplies on top just to kind of see what they'd react to if the paper was already wet. Not that much different from the crayons. They didn't really bleed outwards, but the liquid pencil, it ran with it. So that is everything inside box number two and we are on to the next one. Just gonna try and quickly roll through with these. <laughs> this is the December 2021 box. It also has green like the October one and I'm gonna attempt to open it in one swoop. Nope, maybe next time. Maybe I could at least like open the paper gracefully. <laughs> that didn't work either. <laughs> Ooh, I know what these are. These are alcohol based markers. But I don't know what this is. It's some kind of like white pen, I think. It's all Japanese and it appears to be some kind of paint pen, but apparently it's flammable. <laughs> I don't know why when something says flammable, I instantly get nervous. Like I can spontaneously combust or something and then I'm gonna be in danger. Is that a reasonable phobia? <laughs> but the orange tape is very explicit about not removing this sticker. So I don't know, maybe it's important. Whoa, I thought this was gonna be white. I gotta say this box is definitely more up my alley than the previous two, just on art supplies that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So there are six pro markers. I made the mistake of thinking that they were all brush markers at the beginning and I got really excited, <laughs> but that's only the cool gray one. The rest are just bullet nib and chisel. No brush. They sure look like missiles though, don't they? 
Also in the box is the Pigma BB, which is a very thick brush pen. We have a super fine 005 micron. See how small that is? We also have an F pencil, whatever that means. And then this month's sticker sheet. This one reminds me of me. We also have the monthly mini magazine loaded with all the info that you'd expect and a beautiful print. I, I love this one. <laughs> the art style really speaks to me because it kind of reminds me of mine. And whenever I see an art style that's like mine, I just fall in love with it. Beautiful, beautiful for grid swatches. Big fan of the character art in this one. And finally, we have some Bristol paper, which is perfect for alcohol-based markers. But yeah, I went back to that multimedia sketchbook and started swatching. Um, Cause I don't know, for some reason, I thought it was a better idea than using the actual paper that came in these boxes. I wanted to keep it all organized and then, and maybe I regret this decision. But you know, it's kind of too late and I have to learn to accept it. Anyway, kept it fun again, you know, this time I got serious rainbow vibes from the art supplies. Do a rainbow, starting with, you know, red and then orange that it still confuses me that this is orange. Just make the cap orange. <laughs> You're confusing me. Anyway, yellow. Yes, yes, yes. Then we have green, blue, and what's a rainbow without a cloud, you know? And then like little clouds in the distance and maybe all over the place. Who's judging? And then uh, you can't forget the pencil. Or maybe I did and I just kind of threw it in there last minute, but who knows? I also, like, this is a secret, but I grabbed my white Posca pen and I went over the, like, the rainbow parts that are inside the cloud, but don't tell anyone. It felt a little blank, so I added rainbow sparkles. But that still kind of wasn't enough for me, so I ended up adding rainbow rain falling through the cloud. Kind of like the rainbow being put through this dis cloud dispersing device, which transforms the rainbow into tiny droplets, and then they fall to the earth. Cute, right? All right, <laughs> spoiler alert, but this was my favorite box and I'm really excited to show it to you. I tried to open it one go again and I failed again. <laughs> Consistency. And look, it says there's magic inside. I'm not sure I found any of that, but there were these three paint pens, a line brush, a round brush, and a flat brush, and then a magic sponge. Look at that. There's also some magic acrylic gouache, a big magic white acrylic gouache. It's almost like they've used gouache before and they know that like when you use it, you need a lot of white. And there's also a magic pipette. I think that's what you call them. It's like a eyedropper and a Magic Pilot G-Tech C4 pen and your Magic Pentel 0.2 mechanical pencil. I haven't been able to confirm the magic abilities of any of these art supplies, you know, for legal purposes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is another thing that just kind of blew me away. Besides like the really good art supplies in here, like I love acrylic wash, but look at the magazine in this box. Like they upped the ante. So we're just gonna take a moment here and just actually appreciate it. Thank you for humoring me. <laughs> Again, we have a spread for every art supply and swatches. The mechanical pencil actually took up two spreads in this booklet. Like there were some serious instructions, which I am very grateful for because I was actually struggling. <laughs> I honestly don't think I would have gotten it working without them. The eyedropper obviously gets featured as well as the chicken nuggets. I mean, I mean, natural sponge, but admit it, this page made you hungry. And of course, loads and loads of literature to sift through as well as beautiful, illustrations by the featured artist and links to a process video. I really enjoyed the step-by-step -step pages with like the progress shots, but that's also like my favorite part of creating illustrations is the like beginning sketches and thumbnails and stuff. So I guess that makes sense. This is the sticker sheet for the month. For some reason, my camera didn't really want to focus on that. So sorry. <laughs> also have a print using the art supplies from the box. Is it, is it weird that I like the back of the print equally? I don't know how I'm supposed to hang this up. This box actually had a very chaotic bonus post Poster. I think the brush is on fire. Pretty cool, eh? <laughs> and then finally, there are three sheets of some very sturdy St. Cuthbert's Mill paper. This box really inspired me. I wanted so bad to just kind of throw the rest of the video away and just focus on this one, but that wasn't my goal. So I stuck with it and I swatched everything in that mixed media sketchbook from the first box. <laughs> I started sketching with the mechanical pencil, but my camera turned off. And then by the time I realized it, this is what it looked like. But as you can see, I decided to create a small illustration as my like swatching. Very much inspired by the art in the box. I started with the black and I kind of just globbed it all around the sketch to kind of block out the marker that was peeking through from the other side of the page. Gouache is just so opaque and perfect for this. I love gouache, especially acrylic gouache because it doesn't like reactivate with water. I then switched to a smaller brush and I took some red gouache and I painted in the roses as well as the collar and the sleeve. I took some blue and colored the center of 
with the blouse and I literally had no idea what I was doing but I guess that's like swatching for you. <laughs> then I mixed up some yellow and blue to make a green and I colored in like some leaves. I tried first some sh just straight yellow from the tube for the hair but I didn't love it. So then I mixed a skin color and I also didn't love it. I lost the hair of my brush, also didn't love that. I mixed a new hair color that's more orange and I glabbed that down. Decided I actually preferred the yellow that I didn't love. So then I just went back to the yellow and I layered that on top while everything was still wet, which turned out way better than I expected. And I kind of like the texture and everything. Then I mixed like a new skin tone and I painted that all over, which was also much better. Then I just globbed on some lips and blushies and boom, a little face of gouache. Then I went back to the black paint just added some eyes and eyelashes and stuff. And, ah, I love gouache. It's one of those things I really want to practice more with. It's just really fun and I love how opaque it is. But since I kind of wasn't totally swatchy and I had mixed some colors, I kind of wanted to have a separate place with just the colors straight from the tube. So I reverted back to my circles. Trying my best though not to make a perfect grid and like kind of making them artsy. I also made the white circle even bigger because you know the tube's bigger. Huh? Yeah, I'm so clever. So there's the box. I love everything in this box and I'm really excited about it, but I gotta move on to the next one. Oh wait, I forgot the sponge and the pipette. Ah, well, you remember them, right? So this is the March 2022 box. I failed opening it in one swoop again, but like, I don't know. What is the point in goals if you don't fail at them, right? <laughs> Weird supplies inside. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Look how gracefully open to this one. <laughs> Sometimes things work out. So the first thing I noticed was this color extinguisher, which I have literally never heard of. And that's kind of saying something. Like I feel like I've, I don't come across new things. Come across new brands, but I don't usually come across new things. It claims to be able to erase brush pens. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> also in the box, we have a Pigma Micron, this time a much larger size. This is a size 10, which like just see, like look how much bigger this one is than the other one. We also have three Van Gogh or Van Gogh or Van Gogh. I don't know. How do you want me to pronounce this? I've heard it both ways. Anyway, the colors were indigo, yellow ochre, and turquoise green. I'm just gonna tell you, resist the urge to squeeze metal tubes. You'll thank me later. There's also four watercolor brush pens by Ecoline. These are actually really cool. I've used them before. They're a bit more inky than watercolor. The colors are yellow ochre, turquoise blue, pastel yellow, and black noir. We have a 2B graphite pencil, a Da Vinci synthetic flat brush, kind of camouflage in the paper. It feels really nice though. I like this one. Underneath the tissue paper, there's yet another mini magazine. I was a little disappointed that it's like back to the old vibe and not the binding that we had from the previous box. Kind of like just took a step back in this for me. Anyway, I'm excited to try that brush pen extinguisher. It kind of amused me that they saved a whole spread in this for the 2B pencil. I don't know. Maybe it's not funny. It was funny to me. We have the sticker sheet, a print with some like hidden animals in it. The camera didn't focus so well, so we'll just move along. And finally, another sketchbook, kind of like the one that came in the first box, although the paper does seem a bit thicker. So I'm guessing this one is watercolor paper. It's kind of funny though that like the designs lined up, but they're kind of different. So I don't know. That was cute. As for swatching, I'm going to try squares this time. Since watercolors are transparent, I chose to layer the squares over each other, you know, just to kind of get a feel for how they'd look layered and how these colors would look together. That black pen though, that is rich. Ooh. The pencil came unsharpened and they didn't include a sharpener. So I just kind of quickly did that with my own. Upgrade clearly doesn't come with like every single thing you need to make art, like some sub boxes do, but it's kind of more of just a nice option to have rather than a downside. Cause it kind of, you can just make that decision depending on what you are looking for from a subscription box. And I did the same thing with a thick micron. Also swatched the watercolors. I mixed them a bit with water and then, you know, drew some squares. Now it's finally time <laughs> to try out the six. Extinguisher. It has a little brush inside that you can apply directly to your art. I tried it on everything, including the Micron, which it just kind of seemed to blend outwards with. The graphite didn't do anything. Black watercolor pen like worked immediately and just turned it into gold. I read on the paper that like vibrant colors, you might need two coats of the extinguisher. So I was gonna wait for that to dry and do another one. The yellow also disappeared immediately as well as the yellow ochre. The solution, it kind of smelled like chlorine. Kind of makes me wonder if this is just bleach. <laughs> it doesn't really have that much information on it. The Van Gogh colors, they didn't seem to have any effect with the solution, but I don't know. That was weird to me. It definitely proves that the watercolor pens are not watercolor, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I did end up doubling the solution on the black ink and I did try to add more to the watercolors after everything had dried, but it didn't seem to have any kind of effect. 
Then I thought, oh, I'm going to write a secret message. And then I erased it with the extinguisher, or I guess I extinguished it. But I mean, it did leave a bit of residue, but at the same time, like it's gone. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> then I wanted to experiment and erase a large spot. So I drew this like much bigger heart, waited for it to dry. Then I just tried to cover it with the solution. But I noticed, I think it wasn't quite dry enough and it got really splotchy and it didn't like extinguish it. As time passed, it slowly disappeared. And then I just added some more solution. And again, it took more time. Time. And then the, I mean, it still took more time than like trying to extinguish a tiny spot. I'm not sure why that is, but I have a feeling it has something to do with like how dry the spot you're trying to extinguish is. And then like the longer it's been since you used the brush pen, the quicker the solution works. It's very interesting. It's definitely, it kind of gets your brain clicking. Like just trying to like understand it because it's very different. And let's move on to the last box. <laughs> I really just want to make some art at this point, so I'm getting real itchy. Let's just get through this next box, eh? But let's quickly take a look at what we've got in here. And I'm going to see if I can pull this tab in one long swoop. <laughs> it's my last chance. I did it! Inside, we are greeted with some beautiful magenta tissue paper. They have not given up on the bold branding, that is for sure. I tried to open it very carefully, but for some reason there was still a hole in it. And ah, these things are huge. What? Have you ever seen pens in this pit? I haven't. But it does look like a bunch of acrylic pens. First up, we have the Edding Permanent Acrylic 1 to 2 millimeter pen in the color Traffic White, as well as one in a neon pink. Go up a size and we have some 2 to 3 millimeter pens. We have a pastel green and an opulent turquoise. Going up another size, we have this big boy. It's the 5 to 10 millimeter chisel tip in black. And then whatever the heck this thing is. It appears to be a double ended and it's also very squishy. And it's the color pastel yellow. That is what we know. And it's already leaking. I can see inside the cap and it is ready to rumble. Now that I uh, know a little something about it though, it apparently is a 3D pen, but we'll talk about more of that later. Final art supplies in the box was the pencil, you know, for your sketching pleasure. We've got the mini magazine with all the things you've come to expect with the process tutorial video linked, as well as the art supplies listed and loads. Very interesting literature. I wish I had time to show you it all. We've got the sticker sheet. I agree with this sentiment. Instead of a print in this box, they included another poster, um, which I think really suits the illustration style for this. And it's kind of cool because I feel like you hang up all the prints. Now you got like a different size and can make it more of a gallery wall, which is fun. And finally, we have the paper. It's Edding Acrylic and Oil Artist Pen, which I'm guessing is clearly made specifically for these art supplies, which is cool. So I'm sure it works really well, but I can swatch the art supplies on that. <laughs> I know we've established that. Anyway, <laughs> back to the first sketchbook. And after some more time has passed, here's what the pens are looking like from the previous box, but it still did not have any effect on the watercolor. Um, so I just have to assume that it doesn't work on that. Let's watch these pains. For my swatches, I chose to do a leaf design because I hadn't done that yet. So I basically sketched it out first with the pencil that came from the box, which I think turned out really pretty. I'm ashamed to say I covered it in acrylic paint pens, but you were nice while you lasted. Luckily, we have a little bit more time together because I have to prep all of these pens. Okay, we're ready to rumble. So I decided to go with a large flat color at first since I am swatching. Um, the turquoise blue was very opaque and lovely. We love her. The pastel green was as well. The 3D yellow one was like really fun. I really liked it. I'm not sure how I would use this. It was kind of like drawing in royal frosting, just kind of the way the bumps would even out and it wouldn't like blend outside of where you placed it in the first place, but it would still like contain that like soft shininess. I don't know. The fluorescent pink one, however, it turned out to be more transparent, which I found it actually says it literally is more transparent on the barrel. It just made it a little bit more difficult, you know, to go over the pencil or even the other acrylics without it being see through. It wasn't gorgeous. So I ended up just filling in the rest of the leaves with some of the opaque colors that we have just to start us off. I also found that these two colors were very easy to blend out by switching between the two colors. I swatched the black pen as <laughs> a dead leaf that fell off, which I don't know. Man, that makes me kind of sad for some reason. But I did the same with the graphite, you know, for swatching purposes. Then I made sure everything was dry before I layered um, the pens over themselves to create some texture and details on my swatch. Never thought I'd say details on my swatch. But yeah, I love the way the 3D pen layers on top of like another color to add details. And I can just see how you could create really cool effects in art this way. But you definitely have to start out thinking you were gonna do it. I'm not sure how you could include this. You have to think about it. Definitely new. 
definitely new. And then I finally got around to using the white pen. I figured since it was white, I wouldn't like fill in a leaf with it, <laughs> but I could use it on top of something. It worked really well on top of the black. And uh, there we have it. There is my swatch page. <laughs> so that's what six months of an art subscription service looks like. And uh, there's a lot more than I think I realized even. And specifically Upgrade just seems to really pack their boxes, which is cool. I figured for the fun of it, I could try and create an illustration using all of these art supplies. There's really no way this is gonna look great. Cause um, I mean, it occurred to me after I already started that each box was curated to look good with the art supplies in that box. You know, not with like the other ones. So mm, let's watch this disaster unfold. <laughs> I first just kind of surrounded myself with all of the art supplies they add up. There's a lot here. So um, I think I'm gonna need like a plan. So I grabbed my sketchbook and I started sketching some ideas. This is always my favorite part of creating any sort of illustration. I mentioned this before, but I just love how freeing it is. Like how unimportant. It's super stress relieving for me, you know, just knowing it doesn't really matter how it turns out and I can just have some fun. And if it doesn't turn out, I could just start another thumbnail just like, like that. Like it's all easy. Anyway, I wanted to draw a person. It just feels like I have it in a while. So that was the inspiration behind that. For the rest of it, I figured I'm gonna need a lot of elements so that I can include like all of the colors and different art supplies from all these boxes. So I thought flowers might be a good way to go. That way you can have a bunch of different colored flowers. I like that idea, so I ran with it and I just kind of focused on the shapes and the composition from that point. I really liked this first one, but I decided I might like to draw a full body instead. So I adjusted the composition of a girl sitting in the flower field. I also centered the sun and kind of created a triangle shape with the flowers pushing the shape of the composition even more and that made me really happy so I basically just came down to like redrawing the girl's face to get a better grasp for how I wanted that to look like and then I was like well am I certain about the pose so I did like a tiny thumbnail of the girl's pose to see if I liked that better and then I'm pretty happy with how everything's turning out so I figured I could try adding color just to kind of see how everything was gonna layer I had a really good idea since I had already swatched everything but this was just kind of an extra step to see how they were actually gonna look together together I started with the more transparent art supplies and moved into the more opaque ones since they'll layer better, clearly. <laughs> and I'll be able to cover my steak. Uh -huh. So now I have like a pretty good solid plan. I ended up getting my swatch book back out just to reference all of the colors. Um, and I also grabbed a paper plate to prep the paints and I decided to use the St. Cuthbert's of the mill paper from the gouache box. It felt like it was the sturdiest and it would be able to handle everything. As you might have guessed, if you've ever drawn anything before, sketching is step one. I ended up drawing the character a little too high. So I did have to erase it all and restart, but I think that was definitely for the best and I like it better now. Now with the character properly positioned on the paper, I could focus on adding details like the outfit and the hair and such. Then I moved on to the flowers and made sure I was happy with the positioning of all of them, keeping that triangle vibe that I really liked. Then I went back to the character and finished up all the parts that overlap the flowers, which was basically her arms. And we have the finished sketch. As for color, I chose to start with the background, specifically like the blue part where the sky is going to be since I had a lot of blue art supplies. I figured I could just kind of switch between them and create like a fun texture in the sky that way. One way I thought I could do that was by pulling the colors outwards from the sun to kind of create basically a blue starburst coming from the sun. There was just a lot of blue art supplies. <laughs> so this did take some time. It honestly turned out really vibrant and bold and I'm just, I'm really happy with the way the sky turned out. It's probably my favorite part of the illustration. And I don't know, honestly, if that's because it's the best part of the illustration or because I spent the most time on it. Probably that one. I mean, just look at, even without anything else colored, like I, I could hang this up and just be like, look at the pretty sky. And people are like, it's not done. And I'd be like, yeah, and? <laughs> I continued with the background and I moved on to the yellow so that I could color in the sun. Again, I started with the most transparent art supplies and then we moved on to more opaque ones as I went. There weren't too many yellows, so that was pretty easy. I used the green watercolor crayon for the grass on the bottom. So I just kind of like layered a little bit of that and then used water to like blend it out and make sure the entire bottom half was covered. Then continuing with the green art supplies, I used the pro marker for the stems of the flower, then layering over that with the Edding acrylic pen, which is opaque so that I could kind of cover over any parts that I'd accidentally put blue. 
I'm not really sure what else to say. I colored in some of the flowers, again, starting with the more transparent art supplies and moving towards the opaque. I kind of just jumped around the illustration trying to use as many art supplies as possible. Something that I thought really packed a punch was this yellow acrylic pen. I loved this. Okay, so basically I layered over the blue of the sky and basically added these like radial starbursts of sorts kind of coming from the sun. I don't know, it just made me really happy. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. And that was pretty much the background done for the most part. So it was time to move on to the character. I had a few black art supplies to use. So I used them for the hair. And then as well, I used this liquid pencil for the front strand to kind of create some contrast there since all of the other black art supplies looked exactly the same. Then I switched to the gouache for basically the rest of her, <laughs> mixing like a skin tone as well as a pastel pink for the dress. I really didn't want her to be too complicated since the background was very busy. So I kept her simple. I'm not sure if that was like a good idea or not or beneficial in any way. Then once she was done, I took all the liners and I just kind of put little details into the character. This took a few tries because some pens didn't work as well on top of the gouache. I did end up using the 3D pen to add little texture squiggles to some of the centers of the flowers. But at this point, I was feeling a tad burnt out and art blocky. So I chose to step away and just appreciate it for what it was. And this is our finished illustration. I wanted to send a big thank you to Upgrade for sponsoring the channel. And don't forget, I do have the 15% off code waffles15 and I'll have everything linked in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!